Welcome back to Reform Perspective. I'm Josiah Spinoza. Um, I saw this video on YouTube and I wanted to talk about this a little bit, especially because um, in our modern culture here in America in the West, um, it's widely accepted and even without question the notion of of homosexual relationships and transgender, trans, uh, transgenderism and like this whole um, push of this sexual revolution in the American culture um, and what it means to define what love is. Um, and so when I saw this video, I, I, I knew I had to make a video uh, talking about it. It's talking about um, just the the immense fallacy uh, that this video tries to portray. Um, the reality of this is um, as soon as you reject God's notion of the created order, as soon as you reject the idea that God created a man and a woman to be what love is supposed to look like, and that is God's creation for a man and a woman to be in holy matrimony with one another, to have a covenant relationship with one another. And it's only designed by God to be a man and a woman. And as soon as you reject that notion that God designed a relationship to be or to follow this type of pattern, then you can come up with any kind of definition of what love ought to look like. Um, but we as humans do not get to define what love is. Nor do we get to ultimately say what well, love isn't. Um, it's God who has ultimately designed in the created order of humanity for a man to love a woman and for a woman to love a man. And so while when I was watching this video, I was um, I was actually very frightened at the notion of this idea because I think you can quickly realized just how dangerous this concept would be and the, the setting of this video is that it was recorded um, during valentine's of 2015 um, so this was just almost two years ago and the idea is that um, love doesn't have a definition love can look like any sex loving any other kind of sex or any ethnicity loving any kind of ethnicity which i agree with the second premise i think um any person from any kind of background, ethnical background, background, racial background, can love uh, another person from any other ethnical or racial background, as long as it follows the pattern of God, of man loving woman and woman loving man. And so I want you to look at this video and we'll kind of analyze it as we go through it. All right, so we see right off the back. Um, they start off with like this kind of x-ray image of these two figures, and they're just skeletons. They're just pictures of two skeletons, and it looks like they're holding each other, embracing each other, and kissing each other in the, in the actual x-ray. And then in the picture, they kind of separate, and they go, and they appear on the other side, and oh my goodness, it's a girl kissing another girl. How could I have not seen in this x-ray image of a girl kissing another girl? They were just bones before, but now they appear, and all of a sudden, it's two women. So the idea is, um, we're just bones. That's all we are underneath all of this skin, all of this um, beautiful design that God created in our bodies and in our... Um, created order of our bodies that underneath it all we're just this material being and it doesn't matter what sex we are but just all that matters is that we're bones is that we're material beings um and so what ultimately defines us is our notion of humanity or our notion of what a of what um, a person is not god's definition because if we say that God is the one who ultimately designed 
sexes, female and male, then we cannot say that our bones are what ultimately make us people. And I want us to consider this, this idea. If bones is all that matters, is if all that really matters is um, what we define as humanity, what if that x-ray would have been the picture of a 15-year-old or a 14-year-old boy with a 30-year-old woman? Hey, they're just bones, right? I mean, love has no definition. What if it's a 12 or 13 year old girl with a 30, very like a smaller 30 year old man? I mean, if we're just bones, it doesn't matter, right? And do you see the, the, the problem behind this is this notion that somehow we get to define what um, love looks like, that we are the ones who ultimately get to define what love looks like when we don't. Because we are not the ones who created us. We are not the ones who designed our bodies to be a certain way. God designed us in beautiful ways. Women are made beautifully in the image of God. And men are made beautifully in the image of God. And we are not just our bone structure. We are not just our skeletal or our neural structure or our muscular structure, we are designed by God to be male and female. He designed humanity to be male and female. And he designed the first man and the first woman to be the ultimate order of his design, of what love is to is supposed to look like. And I usually, you know what, I usually get hear this question. And the question is, well, if it's only right for man and woman to be together because they're the only ones that can have babies, well, what if the woman can have a baby? Does that still make it right? And the answer is yes, because God is the one who opens and closes wombs. And just because a woman, by God's sovereignty or God's providence, has closed the womb of the woman, it does not mean that all of a sudden his design for man and woman is somehow um, destroyed. That somehow the relationship between a man and a woman, the covenant relationship between an, a man and a woman, is somehow um, nixed because the woman's womb is closed. Because if God so chooses, he can open that womb and grant them children. So we are not ultimately our bones. We are God's designed creatures to be in covenant relationship with one another as a man and as a woman. And only one man and only one woman. Let's continue watching this video.
So you see there, um, it's very easy um, for the world to define l love as having no boundaries. They can say it has no gender. They can say it has no uh, sex. They can say it has no race. And some of those things I actually agree with. You're right, love has no race. God designed for humanity to be diverse, racially diverse. But to make the jump from having no race to having no gender or no sexuality, that's where the problem lies, especially when you take the role of gender and say love is gender neutral, and so a man can love a man, and a woman can love a woman, and a man and a man can raise a family just as easily as a man and a woman can raise a family. You can define it as that. It doesn't make it right. It doesn't make it true. It doesn't make it God honoring. And I know it's gonna. This video is gonna receive a lot of backlash, and a lot of people are gonna dislike it. But I know it's not about whether or not you like it. It's whether or not. You recognize what God has designed to be according to his purpose, not according to ours. And you say, well, that's a slippery slope fallacy. You're just making the conclusion that um, one set of bones can easily be a young boy or a young girl and, a, and an old man and an old woman. And, and that's a slippery slope fallacy. You're assuming that this, this idea is, is also going to lead to pedophilia. We're not far from that. We're not far from that whatsoever. And it is a slippery slope. And we're sliding all the way down. We really are. One thing is leading to the next. And the next thing is leading to the next thing. And we're slipping and we're slipping and we're slipping. And we keep slipping. And for you to say that... That black woman and that Asian man is the same thing as the black man and the black man. That's a fallacy. I have no problem with a black woman being with an Asian man. The problem is when you as a society get to define that the, that, that relationship between the black woman and the Asian man is similar to the woman with the woman or the man with the man when it's not. Because God did not design it to be that way. And when you say that love has no boundaries, it has no definitions, it has no borders, you're saying, God, you don't get to decide what love is or what love should look like or how love should be given. And listen, I'm not against men loving men in a brotherly way, in a neighborly way. But I am against it in the erotic sense. For men and men to be lovers and for women and women to be lovers is against the design of God. And then to bring out two people of different religions... I agree with that. I don't think Christians and Muslims and Buddhists and and Hindus and Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons, I don't think we should hate each other at all. But to say that that love between those two people from different religions is the same love of a man with a man. No. That is a fallacy. Because underneath it all, we are not bones. Underneath it all, we are made in the image of God, both male, female, image bearers. And therefore, God gets to, the, to define how love should look like. And if you are not finding what that means in Scripture, if you are not finding what love ought to look like between two individuals, that is, a man and a woman, in the, in the erotic sense, in the sense of marriage and a covenant relationship, if you're not understanding that in the biblical sense, then you are saying to God that He does not get to define what a covenant relationship looks like between a man and a woman.
And if you do not look at scripture and recognize that God has also called men and men to love each other as brothers in Christ, as neighbors, as friends, and women and women to love each other as sisters and as neighbors and as friends, and for fathers to love their children, God-fearing love, and for mothers to love their children, and and so on and so forth, and for children to love their parents. If you do not see this demand, this command, not demand, but command of God, to love one another as He has designed for us to love one another, so that human flourishing can be according to His will and His purpose, and not according to ours, if you do not see it, then that is only evident that the wrath of God abides on you. And that God is releasing you to your sin. It's in Romans 1. And if you're a Christian and you are buying into this notion that as long as you love one another, and that love has no bounds, and God, God is okay with men and men and women and women and transgenders with transgenders, and you're okay with that, and you're like, yeah, God loves you guys, and and you're okay with the way you are living, and you're okay with loving one another. God, God is okay with that, and you are not a Christian. You do not get to define what love is. God does. So this idea that love has no bounds. Love has no labels. Love has no boundaries. Love does have labels. It is labeled by God. And if you do not look to God to understand that label, and you are looking to yourself, then that is idolatry of the highest order. You are getting to define who God is according to your own image, and that is idolatry. And you you need to repent of that. And you need you need to repent of that sin, and you need to look to the God who has created you in His image, and understand what He has desired of you, in terms of love, love of self, love of neighbor, love of brother, love of sister, love of wife, love of husband, love of children and parents, love of all kinds. God has already said what that love ought to look like. So love does have labels and that is what God has designed for it to be. And if you don't agree, then you need to repent of your sin and turn to the God who will teach you what true love is. Until next time on Reformed Perspective, I'm Josiah Espinoza. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Throw some comments down in that comment box. If you disagree with me, let me know. If you agree with me, let me know. I, I'd love to hear what you have to say. I'm more than willing to talk about these issues. I'm more than willing to to talk, to dialogue with, with other people. Um, and and please don't, uh, don't think that I've come to... Um, hate cause hate in your heart if you hate me because of what i'm saying it's only because you know i'm talking i'm saying the truth but if you are hearing these words and you are agreeing with them then i ask that you pray for those individuals who ha will not turn who have not turned that they will turn from their sin and come to the god who created them thanks for listening god bless you guys until next time on Reform Perspective.